So today I'm going to be talking about laryngeal hemiplegia, which is also called roaring and equine. Um, I was really interested in this topic as growing up as a kid. I go to a lot of horse shows and I hear this really odd sound when a horse would ride by when it's running its pattern. And nowadays I volunteer, my junior year I volunteered at the Florida General Hospital here at Purdue and we actually did what we'll later figure out is the tieback surgery. So we'll start with what roaring sounds like. So if anybody's never heard of it, this will kind of give you a breakdown of what's going on. So this is just a normal arena ride, like a horse you'll see, she'll ride a little lap around and you're gonna notice something odd. You can hear what almost seems like a heaving noise. That's what the actual roaring condition is. And that sounds like me when I'm running too. <laughs> Um, so here's something about the condition. The effects of the, it affects the muscles of the larynx due to nerve tissue when the uh, retinoid cartilage blocks one or both sides. So it's important to know that it affects the right side more than it does the left side because of the nerves that go around the uh, aorta, which I believe is later on in the presentation. It also affects the ability to breathe. So as you saw with that horse, it almost sounded like he was out of breath, which is running one short lap. It causes the horse to not be able to take in as much air, so it makes the body work harder, which makes them tire faster. Um, which leads to the exercise intolerance where they don't want to exercise. So this is a big issue with not just show horses, but with racing horses. Because as you know with a racing horse, it depends on your speed and your ability to process that oxygen. So normally your conditions, your roaring is graded on a scale of one to four. One being not so bad and four being the worst. Um, some key points to know, it's more common on the left side of the neck because the unusual nerve course around the aorta. Um, it's more pr common in growing tall male horses around 16 hands. Anybody know how many inches that is? Dr. Alwards talked about it. How many inches are in a hand? Four. Four. So that's just over five foot. And that's another thing important to know when you're measuring horses, it's to the weathers, so it's the ground to the weathers. Um, first notice as a ser at a serious exercise. So as the horse grows up, you're not gonna notice as much because they're not building up so much and having to work so hard, but when you start running that horse or having to make it work more, you're gonna notice it a lot better. So this is just a drawing of the location on it. So as we talked about last week in class, the gutter guturial pouch is right here. And actually the larynx location is located just inferior to it. And as we saw with the name, the laryngeal, it gives you the location where it's at. So I want you to notice these points right here where I'm pointing at it. It's the arytenoid cartilage. So as we'll see in the further pictures, it's gonna be what's gonna cause that blocking. So on the left here is a good, healthy horse. You see your, it's pulled back, it's red. It might be a little inflamed, but it's still nothing to worry about. But now if you look at the right side, you can see where the arytenoid cartilage is bending down into that airway. It's gonna cause an obstruction. It's gonna be harder for that horse to breathe. Um, diagnostic. So the big thing about finding it out is endoscopic. So like we talked about with our degrees of severity, you can tell the third and fourth degree because it's more severe, but if it's a smaller degree, like a second degree, you're going to have to make that horse work more. So as we're going to watch in this video. horse is sneezing, but it's probably due to the irritation of that endoscope down its nose, but as you can see there, the endoscope is wrapped all the way down and is plugged into this machine over here. If you guys have never used an endoscope, this long portion will go into the horse, and in the next screen I'll show you, I'll show you what a display looks like, but this black module right here is used to control it to go left, right, up, and down. Uh, ultrasounds can also be used to uh, figure out other grades, like they can use to the density of the tissue, but it's not as helpful as an actual scope. So here's the actual video. The first portion is going to be a healthy. Two pink arm, the two pink arm So what you want to see here is that both sides are healthy and I want you to pay real attention to this right side where it's really nice and pulled back. It's breathing nice and calmly. So this horse is probably not running on a treadmill because it's not 
breathing as hard as it you would think would be. And normally for some of these scenarios, you'll have to do a nasal spray to help sedate it, because if not, that endoscope's gonna do a lot of irritation down there. So the second half of the video, as you can see, this right side is a little sluggish down, that's blocking the airway. So that horse would, is when you'd actually hear the sound of roaring. It's the right side of the screen, but the left side of the horse. Correct. But it's important to note that it is flipped. So treatment, uh, it's prosthetic laryngoplasty, which is also called tieback surgery. So that's when you're going to suture to the arytenoid cartilage, which is what we saw earlier. Um, there's a new <coughs> toggle technique. I found this out just, it, the paper was posted last year in 2018. It's where you're using this metal toggle piece. I believe it's a stronger metal, I can't remember what they said, and then this is suture line, and instead of going into the cartilage, they're actually going to the muscle under the retinoid, which is gonna give you a stronger hold. Um, rest after surgery. So the reason I have this right here on the slide, even though it's under treatment, is it's so important that you rest your horse. So the average time they like to hear is eight weeks, but 10 weeks is normally a lot better for the horse because it's gonna heal a lot faster. Another important thing to notice is that this surgery is done in your larynx, so that's where all your air goes through and stuff like that. So if you're in a barn with a lot of shavings or a lot of dust or particles like that, it's going to lead to a lot higher infection. So you want to try to keep a clean environment. Uh, prognosis. So this horse right here on the right is going to show you your suture line. So this is where they'll go in to do the surgery. They'll run that scope still up the nostril, but they'll also place their instruments into the right here on the, this would be the left side of the horse, right there where a cheek strap would go. Um, the prognosis is going to lead to better, better breathing and you're going to reduce noise, you're going to get that healthier sounding horse. The problem is it's not always 100%. Like I said, people want to do it as soon as their horse is out of surgery, they want to start working and getting it back to its 100%. That's not going to happen. You can tear those sutures and you're right back to square one. So another thing we want to talk about is the possible increase in inflammatory disease. Um, like I said, you're right there in the layer next, so there's a lot more chance of an infection with all those sutures. and cuts that you've made. And that's my sources. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Questions, comments, experiences with this audience? I mean, if you, you can tell by the pictures, this is the point of the smallest diameter of the whole <coughs> air tube. You know, the mouth is big, and then here you've got, beyond this, you know, the trachea is bigger than that. There's a question over there for you. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, do you know if, in, if this is like, Genetically related, or is it just kind of random? Which horses get it depending on their There are articles that lead to genetics, but the big thing they want to talk about it seems to be more predominant geldings in those larger breeds, lot of your draft horses. Yeah. I don't know if the nerves aren't just as strong in that area for larger breeds of horses, or why is that? That's a good question. Yes. Yeah, because would you have any idea of the approximate cost? I don't have an idea of the approximate cost, but I will say is it's a lot more like people who have either uh, animal insurance, like on racehorses and stuff like that, it's not going to be more for your common breeds, your smaller showers, it's going to be your high-end horses normally. Yeah, and I don't know about the cost of that, but I take my horse for a cardiac ultrasound, and that visit was $500 and that was just for hospital cost, not even that. Yeah, and that's, and you can hardly do anything for $500. Yeah, and then another, <laughs> over $100 for, um, for learning. Yeah, you know, sure. To be able to go to our yeah. And an issue with that is your larger animal is going to require more medicine than a small animal would, so it's going to cost you more. Yes? Now, is this just a uh, general quality of life improvement for the horse, or is it, so like, let's say you have a regular horse, somebody just use it, take it out once in a while, uh, or is this, a procedure that'd be done strictly on like racing horses, something like that, like it's to increase performance or so. Yes, it's strictly a performance thing. Okay. So the more you're going to work this horse, the more it's going to need that extra air. So don't expect to not do the surgery and horse not perform as well as a horse that would receive the surgery. Yeah, but if you were just like a typical owner who just right. rides for a weekend right. or something, there's really no, no point. Yeah, there wouldn't be no problem. Yeah, never do it because it's not like blocking the whole thing. No. It's just 
if you're looking for high performance in the Kentucky Derby, that exactly. has to be Exactly, yes, yeah. there's higher end race horses. Yeah. More yeah. And cost is no object for those things, by yeah. the way. That's for sure. Are you familiar with Rudin Riddle? I am. I'm, are you? I've heard it before. Oh, okay, oh yeah, that's quite a horse for us anyway. Other questions, comments? If not, excellent. I'm going to stop this recording.